couple of things. It's fun, it's weird, and it's orange. The new Tecton X from Hoka is a unique trail offering from the brand that's become synonymous with cushioned, soft, and grippy trail shoes. The dual parallel carbon plates, a first for Hoka's trail line, are surprisingly forgiving and when combined with the softer lower midsole make for a pleasant, snappy protective ride that works across any trail that you can throw at them and in any conditions that you might find. The woven upper is new and will be featured in many Hoka shoes, but makes for an interesting fit, a deeper vamp, and the concern of durability. The light Vibram outsole is notorious for grip, works as one would expect, and brings the shoe to the highest ranks and cost in the Hoka trail line. But is the new Tecton X worth that hefty price tag? Is that new carbon plate technology worth all the hype? We find out in today's review. Let's dive in. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. A couple of things right off the bat. New set, 11 years in the making. I'm so happy. Uh, the Ginger Runner HQ is being built out. I'm going to have a behind the scenes video all about it, about this set uh, and everything on the channel and for GR crew members. I'm working on a bunch of reviews right now. I've been testing a ton of gear over the last couple of months. So you'll see this background change a little bit in each review as I begin to kind of dial things in and, and fix some of the details and stuff like that. But for now, I'm pretty dang happy with this. and. I hope you guys enjoy the future of the Ginger Runner channel. Today, we're talking about a shoe that I've been really excited to talk about for months. I've been running in this thing in super crazy conditions here in the Northwest, snow, mud, rain, uh, really dry conditions as well as of recent. It is from Hoka One One, now just Hoka, the Tecton X, which is their carbon plated trail offering. Hoka has a ton in the works for 2022. So this is going to be the first of a bunch of different Hoka reviews that I'm going to drop in the coming weeks. And yes, that Speed Goat 5 review is coming. You're not going to want to miss it. But before I dive into the review, the FTC requires that I tell you that this shoe was provided for review by Hoka. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative about the shoe. I am not financially compensated for anything in this review. So all of the opinions are my own. I say whatever the hell I want. No one has to approve the video. Uh, with that said, let's dive in. I'll talk about the things I like and dislike about every product that I review. The Tecton X is no different. Let's talk about the things that I like. Accommodate. So this is not an adjective that I've used regularly when reviewing Hoka products. I think a lot of their shoes over the years have been designed for just a narrower foot, uh, not a ton of forefoot space, those who like to have their toes splay or those with wider feet. It's nice to see some of their shoe models have a wide option, uh, but really what that means is the platform stays the same. There's just more accommodating upper material, so more material to sort of wrap around your foot. In regards to the Tecton X, one of the things that really stood out to me right out of the box was the fact that it is a more accommodating foot shape, especially compared to something like the Speed Goat Evo or the new Speed Goat 5, which tend to be on the narrower side. This toe box tends to favor those who have a wider forefoot or like those toes display, have a bit more room up front. Uh, so for those ultra runners, trail ultra runners, you might like this as a shoe where your foot can continue to swell and, and fill the void. I think it works well. I think it feels good. So the fact that this new platform, this new shoe, all the new tech that's involved with it still has an upper that is accommodating. They took that into consideration in the design. That's a plus. Grip. So it's no secret. I like Vibram outsoles. They tend to be very durable. They tend to provide plenty of grip in adverse conditions, obviously run in a lot of the adverse conditions here in the Northwest. So I tend to put that to the test regularly, whether I want to or not. I do like the Vibram light base outsole. I don't think it's as tacky as the heavier due to Vibram outsoles that we see on other trail shoes from Hoka and other shoes in general. But the light base, uh, there's more cutouts. It's lighter. It's still quite durable. It's a bit denser material. I put well over 100 miles in this shoe since I got it for review. And honestly, the those lugs are not wearing down nearly as much as I expected from the light base. So it's a more durable material than I expected. You get plenty of grip out of it. These tiny little triangle lugs do the job. There's enough depth to them to get the purchase that you need, whether it's on super technical terrain or muddier, sloppier conditions. It's a good kind of all around outsole. Plenty of grip and I like it. Weight. The Tecton X is really light. In fact, it's sub 10 ounces in my size, size 11, 281 grams. Uh, that is an extremely light trail shoe that is holding up much better than other trail shoes that are in that lighter realm. Uh, compared to something like the Evo Speed Goat, which is one of my favorite shoes from, from the last couple of years. I know many of you really like that shoe from Hoka. That shoe is over 10 ounces in my size and over 300 grams in my size, size 11. So this is lighter than that. You take into account the fact that it has parallel carbon plates, uh, the additional woven upper, all that stuff. And it's still holding up quite well. This is a lightweight shoe that packs a punch. 
gotta commend them on that. And finally, the carbon plates. So they're doing something unique. They have two separate carbon plates that are side by side, paralleling each other. Uh, it does provide you with plenty of stiffness, but not so much that the shoe becomes alienating and certainly for those who have perfect form. Here, what you get is a snappy shoe that provides you with that propulsion while simultaneously providing you with protection underfoot, but it doesn't get in the way. So this is a very similar feeling that I had underfoot uh, from the North Face Endurus, which had that Pibax plate. In the end, the experience I was expecting out of the Tecton X, you know, very stiff, uh, hard to run in on multiple surfaces, turned out to be quite the opposite. And it's been a fun time. Nice job, Tecton X, with you and your parallel plates. That being said, it's not all barbecue cookouts and gold medal hockey games. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the Tecton X. Let's get to those now. Starting with the lacing and tongue. So this is a weird setup. The lacing comes down quite far into the vamp on the forefoot. Uh, half of the holes are pass-through holes, so they actually take up more real estate. And the fact that the tongue is thin and beveled in at the top means that you could get that, that tightness across the top of the laces, which requires relacing the shoes, that pain across the top of the foot. Uh, all of this in combination makes for an ill-fitting upper through the top of the foot. I think the weirdest part is the fact that the laces do come down so far into the vamp. What, what ends up happening is if you have to tighten the laces, which I found myself having to do, fairly regularly, uh, I'd have to pull on the bottom laces and work your way up, kind of tightening everything down, right? What that ends up causing is fabric overlay over the vamp area itself. It's because the laces come down so far, there's a lot happening right across the top of the toes. It's, it's a strange design. That in combo with that thin tongue, um, it worked for me as I broke the shoes in. I just kind of dialed it in after a while. It's gonna be something that you'll notice right out of the box. It's gonna look weird on your feet as you look down because things just come down further than you're probably used to. Uh, overall, it's just something that I needed to make note about. The heel counter. So when it comes to fit, uh, kind of where I had the problem is yes, up here through the front of the laces, but the heel counter itself doesn't have a ton of structure, especially compared to other Hoka's. I get it, they're trying to make a, a light racing shoe that you know can go the distance, uh, but there's really not a lot of structure back here. And when you compare that to another Hoka, like the Zanal, for example, the structure in the Zanal's heel counter or the Speed Goat heel counter, it's there. So it allows you to dial in those laces, get that fit nice and tight on your foot. And when you're traversing technical terrain, dangerous terrain, you don't want your heel sliding out. You don't want a lot of that flexibility. You want to be able to lock things down, right? So losing all of that structure through the heel counter, I think is a detriment to the overall performance of this shoe, especially if they're designing the shoe as a performance shoe. And finally, the price. Uh, the shoe's gonna come in right around $200, I believe, and that is a lot of money. I get it, any shoe with a carbon plate is gonna be a high price shoe. But when you have shoes like the Speed Goat 5 right on the horizon, or other shoes like the North Face Endurance, which are a, fr a fraction of that, price becomes a part of the equation. Ultimately, I think that there are other shoes out there that get you as good performance for a lot less dollar. And uh, at $200, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to spend, um, but I get it. I had fun in it, but is it worth it? And that is it for dislike. So let's take all that information and distill it down into the five categories that I like to sum everything up in. Build quality, comfort, fit, price, and looks. Starting with build quality. I would say that the real hero is the Vibram light base outsole. That's holding up well. I think that the mesh upper works better than I expected. Uh, the carbon plates are super fun. You lose structure in the build quality here along the heel counter, but um, the shoe's just, it's holding up better than I expected right out of the box. Comfort, it is a comfortable shoe. I was worried it was gonna be too performance-based. It was gonna be too stiff, uh, difficult to run on certain trails and technical terrain. It actually adapts quite well. So overall comfort is better than expected and quite nice. Fit, this is again, sort of a shortcoming of the shoe. I don't think it fits perfectly through the midfoot. Uh, you're gonna have some interesting issues here along the toe box with that extra lace hole, plus the lack of structure in the heel counter. Price at $200, it is an expensive shoe. No ifs, ands, or buts. And finally, looks. It's orange, a lot of orange. Uh, Broncos fans, you're gonna love this shoe. I do trust Hoka to come out with alternate color versions that will, you know, probably be more impressive and more fun. But I, you know, I don't mind the bright orange. What I do mind is that jacquard texture across that mesh upper. I don't think it's super attractive. It almost looks like camouflage and it's just odd looking. Uh, but you know, looks are in the eye of the beholder and. It's orange. As the ginger hunter, you probably expect me to love the orange, you know, because of my orange hair. In the end, it's fine, which I think is the same that could be said about me. <laughs> 
which all ultimately brings us to our conclusion. I think the Tecton X is a super fun shoe, and I think a lot of you will really enjoy it. I think that the upper needs a bit more dialing and finesse. I think the outsole provides you plenty of grip. I think the shoe itself is very expensive, but I understand that it's because there's a ton of new tech in the shoe that Hoka is experimenting with, and it is the first carbon shoe from them for the trails. I wish that price point was lower because I want more feet in this shoe so more feedback can be provided to Hoka from a wide range of athletes. There are other offerings from other manufacturers that I think are as good, if not better, trail shoes at lower price points that provide you with similar technologies, whether that's through carbon plate or Pebex plate. And Hoka themselves have shoes on the horizon that are also very exciting and could pull from from some of the momentum that this shoe might provide. Speed Go 5, I'm looking at you. In the end, do I consider the Tecton X a buy, try, or why? That is the ultimate question that I like to try to answer in these reviews. Quite simply, it is a try. If you have those $200, if you have that money to spend on a trail shoe that will last you a while, provide you with a really unique ground feel, and get you up and down a mountain in a very lightweight package quickly, uh, I think the Tecton X is certainly worth your time. So this is a solid try. Uh, to throw into your arsenal, give it a rotation, give it a try, see what's what. And that, my friends, is it for my review of the Tecton X. The question now turns to you. Are you excited about this shoe? Is this shoe a shoe you're gonna consider putting into your arsenal, into your rotation? I'm super curious in the comments of this video. Let me know. I have had these for quite some time. I know a bunch of reviews are already out there, but you know how I roll. I like to take my time with the product, really get into the nitty gritty and the nuance of everything, especially after it's been broken in. Uh, that's it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like and favor to do all that stuff. Comment below. Hello. Uh, if you would like to get a pair of the Tecton X or find out more information for yourselves, of course, I have running warehouse links in the description. They are affiliate links. They cost you nothing, but they do help out the channel. So consider it if you have not already. As I mentioned at the top of this review, I have a ton of reviews that I'm going to be cranking out in the coming weeks. Uh, you're going to want to subscribe and make sure that you get notified every time that those reviews drop because they're going to be on a regular schedule here coming up in uh, rapid fire succession, one after another. It's gonna be fun. Quick reminder before I wrap this up that we do daily live streams. We're here uh, live streaming every single day with the GR crew. If you would like to join the GR crew, get some really awesome perks on the back end, consider joining. Go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner. All tiers with really cool perks. It's all explained there. We would love for you to join the crew. There's a Discord server, there's a book club, there's fantastic support systems for those looking to race or to train or looking for new routes in the mountains. Uh, there's all of that, all of those resources and amazing humans from around the globe. So consider joining. Thanks all. We'll see you next week. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and part of the hardest. I know I am. See you guys. Bye-bye.